What a day. We started off very hopeful. We're going to achieve lots, actually a very big thing today. We're going to apply for our multiple entry Schengen visa to go to the Greek islands. So yeah. stay right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we actually passing them every day, so close. Yeah, so. Yes, so we were very optimistic and we were scanning the area and we tried, decided to actually go and dock closest to the address that we need to go to so we didn't opt to go into the marina to do the dinghy dock. We thought we we're going to be close here, we picked a hotel that was closed for the winter because they, obviously we can park for free at the, at the jetty and off we went. Feel the spray of the waves on my face Atlantic Indian Ocean blue, whoa, land in sight to starboard. Got me home from where I roam. Sailing sister, if you want it, you want it. Sailing sister, if you dare. Okay, so we were already going off here at a nice speed, and, and the waves was not, the waves was picking up. No, it was a southerly wind, um, and we we knew we're not really very much protected. So we had our anchor alarms on, and we checked the whole night, and and we actually tested with both engines at three thousand revs backwards, in reverse or in a stern, and it was actually very fine. So we went. And then we tied up at the dock, and I wanted to show this is the pegs, we're here, and it was pretty a tough ride coming going downwind to the dock, and I discovered that the GoPro battery <laughs> is dead for some reason. I mean, we always charge, there's a big charging station, and we charge most of the stuff. So, this whole episode is going to be basically me and her talking and discussing, not really a whole episode, but this part of the episode is going to be talking. <laughs> so, there we are, big crisis of the battery, but <laughs> that was not all. And then it decided to rain, and guess what? <laughs> no rain protection. We had to dodge the rain all the way there. It was about two and a half kilometers going there. Yeah. So it's in and out of little, have a coffee here, have a tea there. <laughs> when the rain comes, we quickly duck into a cafe, we have a coffee. And then the rain comes again, we duck into another place to have a tea, and then we go again. So imagine, <laughs> imagine us, no, we, we're running around, and we have these, these filers, and I mean, we have all the water protection, but you know, it's still not, paper, it's not yeah. watertight. There is zip locks and things like that, but I we still think, it's going to get wet because it is pouring. Man, we didn't know it's going to rain this much yet. No, we, we heard about, yeah, it's rainy season, blah, 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 but it rains. If they call it rain, it is raining. So we, we left Sisu and we dressed for the embassy, but <laughs> we didn't dress really for the rain. Look at the rain clouds. And we are on our way to the to the visa office. <laughs> this is a crazy day today. Yeah, so we had to come with Tipex a long way, and then we also had to. But look at this pretty place. There was so much so I had to stop to buy an umbrella, a little cheap umbrella, but that saved me. <laughs> forget to look completely drenched at the end of the day. So, and the more we drink coffee, the more we actually want to go to the <laughs> toilets. So, the more we actually started to realize we need a restaurant. This is it's far. I mean, we don't walk that often, right? 
I mean, there is internal combustion engine, so why the <laughs> hell do we want to walk? But anyway, so we had to look for toilets, and we and 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 because it's not uh, a holiday season anymore, most of the places are closed. So the places that we have to go to is very far and far in between, and, and there's even one guy in. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining and we were walking there and he says, are you open? And he says, no, no we're not open. <laughs> not yet. I said, um, are you open for tea or coffee or anything? No. no, he says no. So now we're there on Google Maps and we try to figure out, all right, on our way to the, to the, to get the next place. <laughs> application office, we had to look for where is the next, the next open place. Yeah, and and I will say it's open. open. Yeah, no, they yeah. actually will say it's open because it's not the season. <laughs> it's. I think Google Maps think they open, but they're not open. Yeah, they're not open. So then this poor guy, at one point, we're sitting there, and it's raining, and we were Boy. dripping already. And and the guy came back and he says, uh, we're now open for coffee. Would you like a Turkish coffee with it, please? <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. No, the coffee was nice, but yeah. it was cold outside. Oh, she he gave it to us for free. And, he, and, he, and we oh, wanted to pay, and he says, so no, sweet. no, don't worry. Yeah. So eventually yeah. that became kind of like the thing. No, we, we didn't, we want to pay, but they all say, no, no, they also say, just look at this. <laughs> we look we're like chickens. chickens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, weird. it was crazy. Yeah, it was a very weird day. <laughs> so all these little restaurant owners got so much pity on us, <laughs> but that was not the last of our problems. To find this place, I mean, Google Maps is brilliant. They even have this, what do you call this, virtual thing that you can virtual see? Virtual reality. Uh, no, no, no. Augmented reality. Augme yeah, so. <laughs> that was a problem. <laughs> even that was a problem. Jeez. Now, so Google Maps will point us to a place, and we're there, and you can look at the street view, and, and, and you cannot see the places. So we're there. And we thought there's one building, and it's just apartment buildings, basically. Exactly. You know, it was just like normal apartments. It's not. I cannot see any, like, a, like official building or anything. And and it's raining. Huh? So we run into one of these places. We call them. They cannot speak that much English, mm -hmm. and the people that we ask for cannot. So we have Google Translate now. So it's Google Maps, Google Translate, and people that don't understand what we want. And we and, look like hell. <laughs> yeah, we didn't look. I don't think they would have trusted us. Yeah, yeah we are very, it. very wet. But we have this very official documents at least. Us, <laughs> no? And a GoPro that doesn't work. And a cheap umbrella. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, we eventually found this place. And we walk in there and the water is just dripping from us. And and we ask, where's the visa application base? And a little small office, very, very small office. And there's only one chair. It's like... <laughs> So I've got it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm there and I'm wet and everything is like dripping off me and I just want to get rid of this, this wet jacket the because... The office is so small, he had to put his jacket outside the office on the floor. <laughs> there wasn't even space inside the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very, very, very small. Oh, so, oh. And, and because everything is wet, if, you, if I touch a jacket, I cannot get the, the documents Wait. out without actually tearing them apart because it's really... It, you have no idea, I was very wet. And then this girl, she insisted. Yeah, it, it was all good and fine. And then she said, okay, Pietru, this is you. I need your passport and I need the application, which we do have. We have everything, like, in order, the whole yeah. thing, shoot. And then she wanted our, our ID cards. Original ID our cards. Turkish ID cards, which we didn't have. And we just um, made an application for the residence permit and I sent it to the marina, but yeah. not to... Not this this marina. marina. They send it to the marina where we had our yeah. home address, which is Finnegan. And so right there, poof, everything stopped. Everything stopped. The whole effort of getting there, which took about two hours. No, it just stopped. Just there, bang, smack. Sorry, ma'am, they found the, the boss. They, they the boss she said, even found the boss now. She, you have to card. see the original card. And we, we have the copies by email. So yeah. we, we show them the copies and everything. Yeah. And it's like, no, I want to see the original. It's like, hmm. We have a problem. <laughs> you said we're going home. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, okay, get on that wet jacket again. Okay, now we're going home. And, yeah, yeah, so the whole, the whole trip back um, through all the back streets was basically the same as going there. It's dodging rain and popping in for a coffee and then the WC and then for tea and then the WC. 
So, and, and the wind just picked up, and the rain just picked up, and it just became worse and worse and worse. But we found yeah. our way back to the seashore. So we, when we got to the seashore, sure. man, we saw the sea. <laughs> it is just white horses everywhere. It was, it was, it's just, it, it's still going like that. And, and then, you know, you have this feeling that if it is like, white horses everywhere it is at least 15 knots so we we frantically start scanning whether sisu was still the anchor is okay and whether the mantis is holding us or not and holding we us we were far away yeah we were very far sisu. we were, we were because really we, far away. we just came straight to the sea and not necessarily all the way back so then we had to rush, not really rush but we we had a brisk walk <laughs> no? And one last hotel for a for a pit stop. Now WC trip, which we knew it's going to be a hairy trip coming back to Sisu. We wanted to do a WC stop, and then what? We <laughs> and then you saw the sandbags against the the, the doors. doors. <laughs> I said, <laughs> to the guy, "What's this for?" He said, "The wind is going to pick up. Uh, Prevention." Said, oh my word! And then okay, if the hotels is busy putting sandbags against the Seriously? doors, and it's like all the sandbags, <laughs> it's all the doors is sandbagged. Yeah. This is a little bay, and it is it's it is stuffed with tourists and sailboats during the the mm. sailing season or yeah, actually to holiday season. But last night when we came in, there was only any boats left. There's still a couple of boats here. Yeah? And we know now why because the know. wind. There's no protection here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No protection at all. So, and when the hotel is saying about the sandbox, we know we have to come back very quickly. And then we got to Tipex. And Tipex was going, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. The, the dock was, was quite a, 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 a quite meter, a meter. About a meter drop down. Yeah, because you suffer to get out. Yeah. Yeah? But it's, it's, it's a wooden dock. And then they have all these um, electrical points on the side with electrical wires that comes into the, the, the plug box. And these live wires are protruding. So we decided we cannot put the dock lines yeah, because, crossing them. Because every one of these poles have, I think it was maybe for a light fitting or something. It's probably future light fittings, yeah. yeah. So, not future, I think, they, because many of the and places that we saw, they, they pack everything. They wrap, shrink wrap everything. The and they take even the lights off, they take everything off. Even the lamp, lamp shades, they, yeah, they, they take, take off. Yeah. And they put plastic around it, everything. So I think this is what I did with this jetty. Yeah. So it was like live wires. It looked like live <laughs> wires. So we couldn't put our dock lines around the poles, it, which was the obvious pole. So we, there was like two slats like that, and we pulled it through that. Yeah. And we did. Um, we tied, yeah. Yeah, we tied it according tied to the. Tied down there. But jeez, when we got back to the big. So it was a mission to get into the boat because in a, in a, yeah. when we got out, it was right for Peter. It is already a meter to get out, so it was a, it was mm -hmm. not an easy way to get out. But to come back now, Tepix is bouncing like a. Yeah. I think I think this is yeah. our rodeo. This Radio. is it's even worse than that, that that other hotel that we stopped at with the rocks and the stuff. Mind you, it came close to it. Yes, this it is very close. close. Yeah. But it's very choppy. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have the Atlantic choppy. big swells. Yeah. But the meter, maybe a meter or yeah, maybe a meter around there. But it's very but choppy it's and very close. Yeah. And so and the was going crazy. The dock poles are there and it's like cast iron things sticking out so it's just crazy and yeah so we eventually you and Red, you can we, lose your, your, your shoulder we got me and Pietro and the eggs on board <laughs> we had eggs all our documents <laughs> our passports everything passports yeah that was, yeah, that was and I started person. the engine and I said right and tires no? and I'm tired perfect we did it very gracefully in any way <laughs> And then we couldn't untie any further. So the lines, as as the planks was like, <coughs> like this, the line actually got in between the two planks and actually forced the plank open and come in. As Tipex was ju jumping up and down, just pulling on his lines. That was a very we serious got the lesson. One line out, but the second one, there's just no way I could get it out. It yeah, just... very, very. That was a very big lesson to, that mm. we learned how to, how to select the place where you're going to tie off. But also, Tepix got got damaged quite well. The top thing 
the way the the ring or something a friction ring is and we put it down there that was ripped out of the boat already so it's like yeah. what the hell so so when we couldn't get the line loose we decided all right just let the line the line is still there we just untied the picks completely we've got lots of backup lines yeah we, we <laughs> but goodness. in this so process yeah. yes no those iron things tipics wedged underneath the pond the, the dock yeah sometimes that dock is like two meters above us and then the next moment tipics is almost like half meter above is okay the sea was not coming mm -hmm. over but no. Because of the buoyancy of the of the of the rip, the uh, tipics, it was just like going down it and move underneath, and when it came up, wah, <laughs> immediately, Peter was like, "Here we go, we are going down." <laughs> and I thought, "Oh, hopefully this one is designed for safety that we can lose at least one side or something. Yeah. We can lose." We lost a friend. <laughs> It was horrible, and, and we still need to untie, and it was, oh man, my head was like bashed with the thing coming down. It so, Tipex, we managed to get Tipex, the, the mooring line, and Tipex unfastened from the mooring line, and it's a bowline. <laughs> so, bowlin, no? bowlin. It's a bowlin. So, I realize now why, I mean, that is a line that we want on always, but <laughs> in this case now, mm. You cannot untie a bowline and a, and a stress. So we had to find a way of getting tipics a little bit forward so that the, the, the forward the mooring line is loose enough so I can untie the bowline under the water. So it was a blind untying, this thing inflating. Deflating, yeah. Uh, deflating and the waves is pushing us up and the, the, my head is like just getting inches from man it was not easy that was really a horrible yes. horrible horrible yeah, experience yeah. it was not happy and yeah. then coming back with half the picks yeah then we have to come back we got drenched completely drenched. not in a good way <laughs> yes. not in a good way at all <laughs>
and how big the tear is so that he will not misalign the patch when he does it on the inside. He is also marking the outside. And this is the special PVC glue part one and then part two. Need to mix it quite well and then he applied it to both surfaces. The patch. As well as the inside and because he marked the outline of the the patch he knows exactly how far he need to go to put the glue on. And it does does this now on both sides of the tear. Then he aligned the patch inside and with the heat gun reactivate the glue and then making sure that all the bubbles that there is nicely aligned and all the bubbles is out and then he just started to put some more heat and then apply pressure and this is how I did the inside so now the pixel was also fixed on the inside and then you just repeat the process for the outside Iberimo was quite clean. He cleaned all the, the overflows of the glue. Iberimo even fixed a small little hole or a possible hole. These are the two patches. The small one was just for in case it's a leak, but the big one is holding. The pix is restored again, floating, and the bow of the pix looks quite okay. And we inflated it already for a couple of days in the sun. She was even in the sun a little bit. So I think for now that patch is holding. Imagine that. <laughs> 